Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to the, today's webinar. Um, before we get started, uh, let me just quickly remind you the promotion still on by Volumetrica Trading and Tickmill, uh, which allows you for those who are already Tickmill customers to get a Volsi slide since at a special price. Uh, for those who are not customers already, you can still, of course, request a temporary free demo emailing info at volumetricatrading.com. And uh, of course, if it can help, hi, <laughs> uh, this is the link at which you can uh, uh, the dedicated page to, to the promotion on uh, in collaboration from Volumetica Trading and Techmill. Uh, from this page, you can, of course, have a special price in order to get a, a, a Volsis license. Uh, of course, terms and conditions apply. Uh, in case you want to request a free demo of the uh, Volumetrica Trading Volsis platform, you can use the contact form here at this page, contact us, and uh, uh, request a free demo for the platform and the Volumetrica team will be quickly in touch with you. Um, today, <clears throat> for the web in end of course let me just remind you <laughs> before i forget uh since the topics of the latest webinars we are going through uh i'm perfectly aware they're getting a little bit more difficult than the first ones uh <clears throat> Here you can see in the volumetrica training website among the the educators uh, there is my email address. If you want, you can uh, email me and ask maybe some questions. I'll be glad to give you a reply. Uh, so, uh, said that, let's get to the topic of today. Today we will be talking about Delta, uh, what Delta in terms of volume indicates, uh, what a market microstructure is and why is that is the concept of delta connected to this concept of market microstructure and why this is uh, important to understand these concepts in order to interpret uh, to have a key interpretation of volume and uh, of course how that can be applied to our trading strategies to our trading analysis okay before uh before we we start let me just uh have a quick chat about the s p 500 because uh that also gave me the chance to uh talk a little bit about to make a quick recap about what we said last time about volume profile the volume profile analysis uh because uh in my opinion we are getting uh into a quite tricky phase for the uh, american indices and s p 500 of course as the main index in terms of uh stock market okay uh what is happening right now at the S&P 500 future. Uh, we have started, as you can see here in my chart, a downward phase, okay? We had uh, two uh, days with a strong sell-off, okay? And right now we are getting very, very close to an area which according to a uh, long-term analysis uh, of the volume profile it is quite important why uh, the area i'm talking about is the 4150 so exactly exactly here uh, as you can see uh, we are in a specific phase for the uh, long-term volume profile uh, this is a 400 days volume profile, so it is a composite profile. It is a little bit different uh, as a concept since the one that we have talked about last time, since we uh, mostly talked about the uh, analysis to be conducted on a daily profile, but uh, the concept, the uh, you can, and the kind of uh, analysis you can make on this volume profile is exactly the same uh, we, we we did last time 
based on the daily profile. So as you can see, we are very, very at the bottom part of, uh, of what is a long-term distribution. As you can see, this, this distribution. Okay, so right now we are getting closer to high volume nodes located in the south part of this long-term distribution. And that happened, why? Because we, uh, price has basically rejected to distribute in the upper part on the, of this distribution area, very large distribution area. Uh, so uh, we really need to be careful uh, what how these high volume nodes will be traded because they will tend to act as a support. But of course, at the moment, uh, price will uh, break down these supports. Then, of course, we can have an extension of the volume profile downwards. So, uh, in my opinion, this is a very good thing to uh, have a quick look before we, we start with the topic of uh, today's webinar, uh, just to uh, have a further application of the concepts we have talked about last time and two uh, times ago, okay, talking about the volume profile concepts. Today, uh, we will go a little bit deeper uh, in what uh, it will be an introduction of uh, the delta uh, concept which uh, will help us to understand for the next three webinars uh, of the flow application okay uh, of course in order to understand properly what order flow analysis is we need first to uh, understand delta what delta means and what uh, how it creates the delta Okay, so we need to understand what the market, how the uh, how market micro structure works. Okay, the best way in order to uh, introduce this concept, uh, in order to keep it very very simple but uh, understandable, of course, uh, is starting from what an order book is. Okay, many of you have maybe uh, already. Uh, worked using an order book okay also known as depth of market dom okay let me just quickly uh zoom in okay uh yeah like this okay this is of course the order the order book for s p 500 it is exactly the one you can have on the Volsys platform then later on i'll show you how to uh, open a new uh, chart showing the depth of market for each instrument uh, first thing we can notice uh, making this making this tool is that we have uh, of course the price in the middle the price which is trading which is this one you can see here, the one is highlighted in red at the top price, in green at the bottom price, which is in the middle of the, uh, of the tool. And at the right side of the, uh, of the price, we have the ask column, okay? On the left side of the price, we have the bid column, okay? Uh, what do those columns show? Basically, in this column, you can have a list of what limit orders are. Okay, so how many limit orders are placed at each level? Uh, for uh, what regards the uh, as column, you have sell limit orders above the traded price and buy orders are located below the traded price so basically we have buyers located below and 
sellers located above the traded the currently traded price why basically <clears throat> because those orders are just pending orders and they are just orders of traders uh willing to sell or buy at a specific price but basically they don't want to be executed at a worse price than that okay so for instance if i want to uh sell the market at here 39.17.75 and but i want to make sure i don't have a sell entry below this level all i have to do is placing a sell limit orders a sell limit order exactly at this level and that will make me a passive seller why a passive seller because first of all uh, that explains very well the kind of trading i want to do uh, around that area i don't want to absolutely be in the in a short trade i just i'm just waiting for market to to reach the price i would like to have okay so what i'm going to do is just placing an order there and waiting for price to give me an execution at the level okay but by placing a limit order i am telling the exchange that i in case i can't have that price i don't want to be executed at all okay so basically my order just won't get filled okay of course so basically as a passive sellers what i'm what i'm trying to do i'm trying to have a better price since i'm selling i want to sell at an at a more expensive price compared to the one is currently trading right now okay so i'm trying to uh get a better price basically of course a buyer a passive buyer will look to do the same uh, a passive buyer will look to buy at a more at, at a cheaper price than the one currently traded so what it might do is place is placing uh buy limit orders let's assume for example 39 39.13 as you can as you can tell by the price that that this slide is taken from the s p 500 of last year that was a very a very different price by the one traded nowadays so just uh never mind uh so a, a passive buyer of course would place a buy limit order at this level and just wait for price to reach this level and of course have its execution if that price can be traded why so basically we can already tell something very important uh, a specific feature of uh, passive traders passive traders whether either they are sellers or buyers they don't care that much about being in the trade about being in the market what they care about is having an execution at that price not a single tick worse than that okay so that makes them passive sellers so we can tell that passive sellers or buyers uh, and their orders is what constitutes what it makes what it builds market liquidity why because since those are uh, orders just being placed there and waiting to be executed that offers that opportunity for other traders to use those order in order to have uh, an execution okay uh, so let's assume right now i want to buy a contract of s p 500 but i don't want to do that as a passive uh trader i just want to buy uh, a lot at the current traded price okay so i'm not trying to be a passive i just want to be in in a long position so i 
won't be putting a buy limit order. I just will put a market order. I will buy at market. Of course, if I want to buy the market, what do I need? Oh, a seller, of course, to be a counterpart of my trade. Otherwise, I can't buy anything which <laughs> is sold by, uh, if it's not sold by anybody, but to me. So, of course, if I want to buy the market at the current traded price, I will be an aggressive buyer. Why? Because compared, unlike passive buyers, I don't care in this cases, in this case, if I am using a market order, what my execution price will be. What I care about is just being in the long trade. Doesn't matter at what price. Okay. That this is this is the first reason making me an aggressive buyer. But of course, if I am an aggressive buyer, as, as we said, I need a seller. So where do I find sellers? Of course, if there are many sellers here willing to sell, I will find the first available seller at the first level where I have sell limit orders. Okay, those sellers are passive ones, so basically they're just waiting for uh, buyers to buy into the selling orders. As I am trading aggressively that level as a buyer, of course, I am the perf. I will be the perfect counterpart for them to be executed. Okay, so basically, my order, my aggressive order will be matched with with one of course of their passive order already placed there and waiting to be executed okay of course the very opposite will happen if a aggressive short trader want to aggressively sell the market he needs a passive by order to fill its trades okay his trade and where it will fight counter counterpart for his trade of course at the first level of the bid side of the order book because it's at this first level where there are available buyers passive buyers let's put it on his way if we if we already if we only had passive sellers and buyers market wouldn't move at all because we have proposals of selling above the traded price and we will have proposals of buying below the currently traded price okay but we would have sellers uh hoping to be executed always at a, at a, at a at an expensive price and buyers hoping to be executed at always a cheaper price in order for the market to uh to to trade to transact we need some traders some buyers buy into sales and some sellers selling into buying okay we need uh buyers to go <laughs> towards the sellers and vice versa okay so basically uh this is mar market micro microstructures made very very easy but of course this is a very important concept because uh that gives us an example and uh ex explains very well the difference of what uh the differences between buy limit orders buy market orders and uh, uh of course the same for sell orders uh in this case we can uh have a very good example of this if we try to 
let me just put in simulated mode uh, <laughs> because I just want to show you uh, how in fact order works. Let's assume I want to put a buy limit order right now here in the chart, okay? If I click here the buy limit button here in the trading panel of Volsys platform, it will give me this green line that I can place wherever I want on the chart, exactly where I want to, to buy. A buy limit order is supposed, of course, to be below the currently traded price because otherwise it wouldn't be a proper limit order since I can only try to buy as a passive buyer only below the currently traded price, which is this one you can see here as a dashed white line. Okay, so if I uh, place this line right here, now I have uh, said to the exchange, to the CME, that I want to have one lot of micro S&P executed at 41.17.50. Okay, and but I don't want an execution at an higher price than that, not, not even one tick higher, okay? If I try to place this order above the current traded price, of course, the exchange will execute me immediately. Let's, let's try, buy a limit order, but above the traded price, of course, I will be in the market immediately because what actually, let's assume the line was here. I was trying to place in the order here. I said, I said to the exchange exactly the very same thing. I want to buy at this level or better. And of course, in this very specific moment, the market was trading better than that. So uh, my uh, buy limit order will be uh, placed immediately at the uh, current price level but of course of course it it can be executed only as long i have as long as i have aggressive sellers selling into my buying passive order okay so in order for uh order order limit orders to be properly executed we all we always need the count the, the, the availability of the counterpart okay so in this case if i'm buying i need sellers if i'm selling i need buyers all right uh of course this gives us the uh let's find this position and uh, let's get to another slide showing us how orders according to this uh, specific to, to this main criteria are matched uh, because of course uh, oh, let me just well we'll get back to this slide in a in a few minutes uh, let me just explain one more thing about aggressive uh, and passive orders and its relation to Delta uh, many of you might already have uh, heard of delta like for maybe using some tools like for example delta profile or cvd cumulative volume delta referring to the day and uh, let's say what is delta actually as as the definition would suggest it is always a difference it is always a, a it is always a difference between between what is always a spread between what apparently it is a difference between uh buyers and sellers okay normally as we can see in many uh delta indicators like for example uh the cumulative volume delta or for example yeah let's take as an example here the the delta profile 
which is um, oh no actually let me just get another uh, let me just get another indicator to make an example otherwise uh, it's not good enough uh, yeah let me get this one yeah okay so we have at the bottom of the screen a delta indicator what does what that indicator shows us basically for each bar you can see in the top part of the screen it shows the difference of a uh, power of the buying or selling power within the bar okay but as we said in terms of my market microstructure we can never have more buyers than sellers or more sellers than buyers because of course in that case a transaction wouldn't be possible for every single buyer we always need to have another seller and vice versa because otherwise uh, and <laughs> any market could could be working that way okay uh, so delta doesn't really show a difference of buying uh, in relation with seller it, it delta it always refers to aggressive traders so it always shows the difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers in relation to a specific bar as in this case or a specific level as a uh, delta profile shows we will talk about this uh, very quickly uh, uh, very in, in, a, in a couple minutes uh, but this is not a difference between uh buyers and sellers let's take for for example this bar uh this one here this bar at the very top okay which is the corresponding delta histogram below this one okay it shows definitely more buying pressure than selling pressure okay so if we make a comparison between all of those traders who have both brought bought aggressively on this level and those who have sold aggressively on this during the, this bar was information of course we can see there is a, an imbalance in favor of buyers okay because delta is positive so that shows that buyers were more aggressive than sellers okay but as you can see price didn't go straight away in their favor okay how is it possible how is that possible because when do market picks up or down when of course let's go back to the slide about the market microstructure when aggressive buyers for example are able to overcome in terms of contracts traded the number of contracts waiting for be, to be executed so for instance if here we have at this level 61 sell order uh, so sorry yeah sell limit orders waiting to be executed if in and the next second we have 50 aggressive buyers hitting the, the 
the, this level, okay, eating aggressive, buying aggressively on this level, what will what would happen? We will have this, of course, these 50 contracts will need to be executed straight away. So they will uh, consume, let's say, 50 out of these 61 sell orders waiting here. Those 50 uh, aggressive buyers will be executed. So we will have 50 uh, volume trading long aggressively. And here, 61 passive orders will become 11. Okay, because the first 50 passive sellers will will be satisfied already but still 11 are missing because not that much uh, counterpart was provided here on the uh, aggressive side of the book so market won't move at all why because in order for market in this situation to tick to go one tick up we will need 12 more contracts to consume to eat completely those 11 left contracts and look for uh, some more liquidity some more selling liquidity at higher levels okay so this is actually what makes the market tick up or down so what happens when aggressive buyers try to uh, hit the ask or hit the bid side but market is not moving because they are not strong enough to uh, erase all of these contracts and go and think higher we will of course have a measurement of that delta including as a difference of aggressive order only showing a lot of buying pressure exactly as it happened here here we have lots of buying pressure shown by the delta but of course we can tell by the price action it wasn't able to move the price higher this is the very specific situation we were talking about a few minutes ago here there were maybe uh, actually we can tell how many contracts they were tr they were trading uh, aggressively let's yeah uh, delta was in this uh, bar right here the second one actually uh, went up to 1039 delta so that means that uh, in this bar within this bar there were 1039 more aggressive buyers than sell than aggressive sellers but apparently there were even more passive sellers above the bar or the bar went through uh, an area with lots of uh, more passive sellers so apparently those even if we had lots of buying pressure and the delta is of course the demonstration for that is the proof of that uh, which can be measured of course but apparently they weren't able even if they were a lot even if it was a lot of buying pressure it wasn't able to 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 to, to it to consume all of those uh passive selling orders we, which were there of course halt, halting the market because as we said and until this liquidity is not used is not treated is not consumed of course market hasn't has any reason to go higher that of course explain us 
lots of things. For example, why it happens all the time, actually, at market. Uh, many times we can see uh, price uh, and delta indicators showing lots of pressure, pressure, but market not following through. The, re the main reason for that is explained by this dynamic, which you can see on the on the market that can display it, that can be explained by the market structure. Of course, we will talk very uh, well, definitely better than today, but uh, about this kind of dynamic, which is called absorption. This is a very basic, but of course, exact definition of what an absorption is. Price get, gets absor absorbed every time we have a large amount of market orders hitting, uh, lifting the offer, lifting the ask side of the book or hitting the bid side of the book, but actually not making it to move price higher or lower. Uh, and of course, this is one of the main dynamics of order flow analysis. There are even many more, but this is the most important one, the, the main the main dynamic around the all uh, order flow analysis build built. Uh, so uh, let's move quickly on uh, and go to another to the last concept we will. Uh, talk about today which uh, understand which helps us understand even better what market structure is and how uh, market orders interact with passive orders uh, let's talk about how orders actually are matched by the exchange anytime uh, a request is uh, sent to the to, to the broker to the exchange as we said, we have passive orders, which actually are limit orders, and aggressive orders, which are market orders, but stop orders as well. Why? Uh, stop, stop orders are a little, um, are, are quite different from uh, passive order because actually uh, they are not orders providing market liquidity, as unlike limit orders. They are not supposed to be buying orders placed below the current traded price or selling orders placed above uh, the current traded price. It is exactly the opposite. A stop order is a, is an order. Let's assume market is trading here right now. We can have, we can place a sell stop order only below the current price. So exactly the opposite of a limit order. And of course, the same is for a buy stop orders. If we place, if you want to place a buy order, which is uh, above the current price, current rate price, it will have to be a buy stop order. So what happens with stop orders? As soon as price triggers the level of uh, which we have placed the, the order, this order will be sent to the exchange aggressively. So it will, uh, for example, here, as market gets here, this order will hit, will buy, aggressively the first ask level so basically where the first sellers as a passive sellers will be available and in that case this or this buy order will be matched with the first sell limit orders will which will be at that level so in this case uh, basically stop orders are treated the very same way as market orders and our orders matched by market orders and by stop orders will be matched with corresponding sell limit orders and at this stage 
the exchange will uh, count and ask print. So basically, we'll track this order as one aggressive buy order. Okay. Uh, of course, in order for this transaction to take place, we need both the aggressive part and the passive part. But it's like uh, the exchange give it, give it, gives it for granted that, of course, there is a passive counterpart because otherwise this aggressive side would have, wouldn't have been able to execute this trade. Okay, so by just tracking the aggressive side of this trade, of course, it is a way to uh, consider both parts of those actors taking part of that trade. And of course, the opposite will happen with selling orders uh, being matched with uh, buying passive orders and a bid uh, print will be uh, tracked. So as one aggressive sell order. Okay, the difference, the spread between ask prints and bid prints considered within a bar or maybe an area, a specific price level, will give, will give us the delta referred to that bar price level and whatever <laughs> this delta uh, definition refers to okay uh this is the main part uh this is the main concept we need to know about delta in order to understand what we will be saying about all the flow analysis from next time on and of course at next webinar next week we will be talking about how we can use this uh we can read, interpret, and use delta concept using a very, uh, very fantastic, definitely fantastic uh, tool uh, provided by Volsys platform, which is the Vol Analyzer plugin, which is divided into two main indicators. One of those is the Vol Swing indicator right here which is based on of course of delta uh, based on delta and we will uh, have a quick look on how to use it in our trades okay uh so uh we are we are at the end for uh, the webinar of today of course um just in case you want to ask some questions, of course, uh, you are more than welcome. Uh, let me once again remind the uh, offer. You can request uh, either a free demo of the Volsys platform by emailing Volumetrica Trading at info at uh, volumetricatrading.com. I'll just quickly write down the uh, email address in the chat so you can easily uh, have it for your convenience uh, metrica trading.com here it is and of course if you are already a tick mail customer you can have a special price for the platform accessing the special offer on for the entire period our webinars will be will be on at this link okay uh, so that's all that's all for tonight i hope the topic was of your interest uh i wish you a good evening thanks again for your attention see you next week at the next webinar have a good evening cheers